Is it on now? It's on. Hey it's guys, on. we're here, we're coffee talk. We got a special guest today. This is gonna be the greatest coffee talk ever. Silk is here. Don't get your So guys, welcome to today's coffee talk. We got Silka here. Uh, we had we had to have a sit in for Josh. Yeah, Josh is at a uh, on assignment. He's on assignment. Yeah, he's, he's on a, assignment. <laughs> hopefully, we we'll get a report back from Josh's we, assignment. We, we're waiting anxiously for the report, um, but he's on special assignment. Uh, he's way out there on special assignment. Yeah. Parts unknown. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, but Silka is here today, and she's like, I don't know what to say. And I said, We'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You, you know all the answers to these questions. So. Oh, wow. We'll, You'll be we'll fine. Find out. We're just gonna we're just gonna talk and answer questions. It's really easy. So we'll just read these questions and then talk through it. Yeah. Jay, we told her we were going to coffee talk, and she brought. Yeah, I know. What is that? Lime green. I she doesn't know. drink that coffee. She's drinking coffee. this green stuff. I had coffee. Now I have this. What is actually in that? It is spinach, pineapple, almond milk. Banana, it's really good actually. Oh, so she's healthy. She's well, like, hey, oh, when no. she when she gets in the kitchen, uh, it just shuts everything down, doesn't it? Because the noise gets in from oh, mixing yeah. that thing. Yeah. For well, we have to we, we go on uh, silent mode for about a minute and a half. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like she's building some robot in there. It or does. It does. <laughs> We're like, what is she doing again? Oh well, it's fun. Uh, okay, let's get to these questions, guys. Questions this week. We had a lot of questions this week. Uh, first one says, just curious about something. Do you supply the glass display cases or does the vendor have to find or buy them? Both. So the answer to that question is both. We have uh, a thousand booths and showcases at the Antique Center. Yeah. Of those, I don't know the exact count. There's maybe 400 showcase a vendors. Lot. Yeah, there's uh, something like that that we actually rent or lease. Uh, we lease those showcases. But if you have a booth... Then you put your own showcase in it. You put your own showcase. Well, and it's and just, you, there's no additional cost, but you have to supply that case. We don't supply sh showcases in booths. Right. Well, what a lot of people will do, though, they'll for a showcase in a booth, they'll buy like a, a china cabinet or a hutch or something that displays glass, and that way the showcase the, can actually be for sale too. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean, that's, that happens a lot. Yeah, that happens a lot. I did that. I, I put then we also have some there. some booths that will uh, like we we have a gentleman that deals in uh, sports memorabilia that has a double booth, and oh, yeah. he has he just put in a whole new line of showcases in his booth. He's probably got I don't know fifteen or twenty showcases in the booth. So he's paying rent on just that instead, right? On the booth. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And all the cases that are down the center of the aisles, those are... Those are the ones we rent. So when you're watching our videos and you see those back-to-back -back rows of cases, those are our rentable cases, and then everything else is owned by the individual person renting the boots. Okay, that's a good question. Um, here you go. What, what collection item gave you the most... PR, which auction you took besides the inventory YouTube gave you the most new eyeballs on the auction, and new customers at the Antique Center. Um, so the Antique Center, as far as like uh, getting, getting a lot of return on, on an, an item uh, for our YouTube, hands down our biggest video we did was the, the lamp video. The lamp, yeah. the lamp video. The, the lamp video was the biggest. I mean, that's that's got hundreds of thousands. Yeah, it's, I don't remember the exact number. It's so close to 150,000 views or somewhere in there um, for that lamp video. But every day uh, we get, you know, thousands of views of every day now. And it's starting to bring more people in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. It is. Uh, yeah, our Wisconsin friends. Yeah. That's me. For instance, Go ahead. Yeah, our, that it was, by the way, I'm sorry I missed you guys when you were leaving. Um, but I, <laughs> I watched it, the, the buy. And I want to tell you guys, buy it was a great it was actually great, Jacob. I enjoyed that so much. So there were really nice people. Um, had great talk uh, with their mom, and uh, it was. We had a very good time. I mean, we we got into some good conversation. I'll just say, that. yeah. That and they awesome. shot the mall, and, and and really enjoyed that. Um, I think they were a little surprised about how big the mall was, and uh, hopefully. You know that was a great time for him to be there so our, our youtube uh we believe brings a lot of new life to the antique center uh to the mall in general uh, and that's that's part of the reason that we started it was to help build the brand of the heart of ohio antique center um and then yesterday jimmy brought up the cheese from wisconsin yeah we did we, we yeah, I brought the cheese wine <laughs> we brought the cheese out we had wine it was really good it was good wasn't it yeah we had the apple i like the apple the best yeah that was really good yeah it had a good <laughs> that, that nice taste to it so thank you again ladies that was so fun meeting yes. y'all and uh, thank you so you. much and we hope you guys enjoyed your trip together i mean that sounded fun that's what we really like about it. this because it's a destination place people get together friends and they say let's take a road trip 
Unlike, not unlike we used to do when we were yeah. young. Let's go, for, take, a little, let's go let's for a little trip. Let's go for a road trip. Yeah, go 3-4 day trip and now they're coming to the heart and having a road trip. So Hopefully fun. they're enjoying themselves and having fun. But thank you very much for coming. We enjoyed your company. So here you go. Here's a good question. Shipping is, is uh, more affordable for the buyer on whatnot. Is that a concern for the future? Uh, no, it's not a concern. It's a different platform. It's a different set of rules. There's different, you know, every every platform that you sell antiques on or every even shows or where, no matter where you sell antiques, there's always a different set of uh, overhead or rules or, or ways that you purchase and pay for stuff. So our burners.com sales, um, the shipping on that is, is uh, not included in the purchase. What not shipping is included in the purchase price. The burners.com sale, uh, we actually charge a buyer's premium uh, and whatnot does not charge a buyer's premium. But different items are for different platforms bring different prices. So we sold a piece of gold yesterday on whatnot. Um, Lucas was like, Dad, you gotta put it on, you gotta put it on. I said, all right, but gold doesn't do well on whatnot for us. We get more out of gold on the burners.com sale. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so even though the shipping was cheap, we still get twice the price out of that item on our burners.com sale compared to whatnot. Um, now, the also another thing that you have to think about is on our whatnot shows, we pay for all of the packaging as a seller. So uh, my overhead uh, for selling you this coffee mug on whatnot, it might just show you guys a, a price for shipping, but I, in re reality is I got to pack it uh, and box it myself. And um, pay for the packaging pay for, and boxes. Yeah, pay for all that material, the time and the labor to get right. it done. So that's all out of our pocket, where on the burners.com sale, that none of that comes out of our pocket. Uh, so there's, it's just a different thing. It's not that one's better than the other or we're worried about it. But what I would say this is, uh, if you are a reseller, it's going to continue to change and evolve over time uh, and learn yeah. to adapt. Yeah. You know, that's, um, a, that's the bigger the bigger thing in my opinion is a year from now, there could be a totally different way that we don't even know exists yet to buy and sell antiques, uh, rather it's virtual. I, I don't even know what it could be. but. Uh, that changes. Yeah. And you just we, have to I'd like to know though, so we could be the head. I know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't, you know, it's just a different, different thing, different platforms, different items. Uh, you know, I can't sell a painting, for instance, on whatnot mm -hmm. because uh, there's no way to ship a painting on whatnot. I'd have to pay. You know, the whatnot platform only allows you to sell smaller items that can be shipped up to a 15 pound item um you know as far as the way that the program set anything above that we would have to pay for out of personal pockets when we make a mistake on putting our weights in on whatnot and the packages get heavier than what um than what we mark it all comes out of our pockets right. so that's our that's it's our, our fault it's our fault we've actually <laughs> lost uh, not just a little bit of money but a large amount of money uh on items we've shipped before you know i've sold an item for like 40 bucks and it cost me 60 to ship it so we lost the twenty dollars plus the commissions to whatnot, so it's a different thing. Plus the person, the packet, the person, the wrapping. If you sell the the quantity and the size of items we sell at burners, would be impossible to price ahead of time. Like we yeah. have to do that. Well, and, and not only that, whatnot, the app itself um, will will automatically price it out wherever you are in the world. Uh, the app will give you a price, and that's all you have to pay. Um, if there's a difference in that, the whatnot, whatnot company or whatever, I don't know how it works, but you don't have to pay as a, as a buyer, a person buying any more than what is listed. The burners.com stuff, uh, it would be impossible to do that with the thousand items we sell because we'll have items that weigh 200 pounds and 20 pounds and two pounds and jewelry and everything in between. Um, and it could be shipped anywhere in the world. And we'll have customers from you know, Australia, a lot, a lot of Australia. Yeah. We send stuff anywhere in the world. We've had auctions with over uh, successful countries, like 13 successful countries bidding in one auction before. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be impossible for us to do on whatnot um, currently. Well, so, and who so knows where it'll be in a year from She's now. like a walking Rolodex when it comes to all those items because she has seen so many. <laughs> I she list them all. <laughs> she, doesn't, she has for years. <laughs> Does the Heart of Ohio sell <laughs> gift cards? Yes, they do. Um, you can you can uh, order gift cards. Just uh, come and purchase them, or you could probably call in and order some uh, via credit card as well. I'm not sure, but just call the office nine three seven three two four two one eight eight, and they can help you out with that. Uh, or if you're there, just stop up the window. Um, doesn't Miss Pat collect Pillsbury Doughboys? Yes, she does. <laughs> She's got a big collection of them. Yeah. Remember those? When we were at her house, we've seen uh, a bunch. I don't know how many she had, but it was a lot. Um, but I, go ahead. Actually, this weekend, Jacob, I, I went down uh, at south, and uh, we had to do some mowing down there at one at, a, at the camp. And I, uh, I I stopped at a yard sale, imagine that, and they had a little Pillsbury dough, 1971 Pillsbury Doughboy, little squeezer, mm -hmm. and I picked it up, and I was like, "This is kind of cool." I said, "What?" Well, and I was going to buy it, and, and 
Then she threw out the, it had no, it wasn't priced. And I said, how oh, is this a little doughboy here? She said, that would be $40. <laughs> I was like, well, I, I think I'll put that back down. But it was really neat. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was it was the year I was born. It was a 71 doughboy, so it was an older one. Yeah. So that would have been a cool collection. But Silk, here's a question for you. How many catalogers do you, ha do you use to put together a thousand lot auction in a week? Okay. It used to be mostly me and maybe one other person for sterling jewelry now we have joe does a lot of the sterling now all so, the wait did you guys hear what she just said she said that so like quickly and easily it used just to be me uh she is so, she has done yeah. that thousand lot catalog by herself for years well, it didn't used to be a thousand lots like we kept Correct. pushing it up a little well and as we've so. grown we've got to a thousand lots so yeah. you're right you were doing five or six hundred a week by yourself yeah, every the week first few times we did a thousand lots we usually would have to put like one category in there that we can go through pretty quickly because there's items that go much faster and then there's some things that take a long time to inventory so well i know when i walk in i i, I see uh so at the computer at a stand and she's got his headset on with goggles <laughs> and it's magnifying glasses and it looks I like something out of, as well as I used out of to. weird science. I think she, she, what's she <laughs> brewing over there? No, that's just my age showing now. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the magnifying glasses. Uh, Sil Silka, though, is uh, like, I want to say, pioneered our entire auction. Uh, you know, the, the, the way that we sell, she has pioneered that. We used to well, sell old school. Yeah. We, Go ahead. We, when I first learned about the auction business, your mom was teaching me how to use the little tickets that you tear apart and hand write out, and then there'd be one for the buyer, one for the seller, and one for the auction house to keep to, I don't know, double check everything. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to computers, and it's been a lot of trial and error to get where we are today. <laughs> so, you know, what was interesting is uh, jo Jos some years. Josiah, um, yes, Saturday, it was Saturday. He said, uh, uh, we were just talking. He says, I started looking around on, on the internet at other auctions and how they do things in terms. And he goes, ours is the most efficient I have seen anywhere. And he said, I have looked now at hundreds of different auctions trying to figure out how to learn <laughs> more things. To be efficient. And he said, he goes, you guys like us. He says, mm -hmm. we, we have the most efficient because we, Generally speaking, when a, when our burners.com sale is over, if you're a buyer, you get invoiced uh, within an hour of the auction. Uh, you can immediately pay your bill. If you pay your bill uh, that night, the next morning, your item is actually sent to UPS yeah. and shipped out uh, the next afternoon. He said uh, most auction houses uh, that he's investigating, you have to, uh, after you buy the item, you then have to personally call a shipper yourself, uh, have that shipper arrange a time to go pick it up. Uh, he said the process is so long and so many more steps uh, he was very impressed. So uh, that's Good. that's Silka's work. So you having high expectations for how many lots we could sell every <laughs> week pushes us to have to be efficient. It has to be efficient, doesn't it? Yeah, I yeah. mean, a thousand. You think about that. Think about a thousand lot, a thousand things. You could just if, put it, a thousand anything and organize it and get it together and sell it and ship it out mm -hmm. and do it again every week. Mm -hmm. That is a task. And then you have to know where those thousand lots are throughout the process. Because right. when people call and say, hey, can you find this ring and tell me real quick whatever about it? You have to be able to get it real quick and then it's sold and you have to know if it's <laughs> yeah. with us or with UPS or... Right, where it's at. And you guys do a really good job with the organization of it too because so, yeah. your papers tell you exactly what shelf it's on yeah. and where it's at. And yeah. Very, very detailed. Uh, like Silka I said, keeps our business trial and very error detailed. over the years. So <laughs> and we have, we have a lot of trial and error, though. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's re you know, when, when uh, let's talk about Hybid for a second. What was the company's name before they became Hybid? Was it Auction Flex? Uh, no. What was the name? Auction of? Flex is the software. Is the software the for Hybid? Mm -hmm. Okay, but when it's kind of the same. When idea. they were developing all that, Silka was like the, uh, the, the they called her. They would say, "Hey, uh, we're gonna do this new thing. We want you to look just at it." Lots of ideas and, all the time. And she had well, she Things she was like she was <laughs> she was telling them, "Okay, you need to switch this. You need to do that." And then they would do it and then call her back and say, "Okay, how's that look?" And so she was. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say guinea pig, but I want to say pioneer, <laughs> pioneer. She was writing the program. Writing the program. No, she was. She was. Writing any programs. I just have the ideas of what the program needs to she do. She had the vision, of the the understanding right. of how it works, uh, how the functionality is, and then she actually gave them all that information They'll for years an as they developed it all. Now, now, uh, you know, they're they're a I'll huge like, billion hey, dollar this company. Work the way it's supposed. It's to all be. because of her. <laughs> We know, Jacob, that's what you guys even do, even at the heart or anywhere else. You take ideas from your employees and from people that are doing that job. And you say, hey, how can we do this better? Because you do it every day. And she was doing that. I mean, she does it every day, yeah. lots and lots. <clears throat> and so she knows what needs to be fixed and what could help be better. And yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, here's a good question. How do I become a bidder? Um, so depending on which platform you're referring to, um, if you are trying to bid through burners.com, Silka, I'll turn it over to you. Go ahead, burners.com. Okay, we have two options. There's Highbit that we just talked about, which is um, like an in-house option. There's no additional buyers premium on Highbit. So if you bid on Highbit, it's just like if you, when we used to have in-person auctions, if you were in there, in the building, um, you can register on, on actually on burners.com. There are links to both different platforms. So you choose the Highbit option and register there and you can leave absentee bids. Um, the bidding process closes five minutes before the live auction starts and all the bids get downloaded <clears throat> excuse me get downloaded into our system and um then we just execute them throughout the auction there's a second option where you can bid that's live bidding and those platforms are auction zip invaluable or through our burner site and um there you can leave absentee bids when the catalogs like for right now you can leave bids for thursday's auction but then on thursday when the auction's live you can watch it and see each item sell and still bid as it's selling um that does cost five percent extra to invaluable um so the, and we make it really bid. easy guys basically if you're wanting to bid on the burners.com sale go to burners.com and just hit a link, follow the directions. Um, if there's an issue, send us an email or call us and say, hey guys, mm -hmm. I can't figure this out and we'll help you through it. The other side of bidding of, is the question is, we're selling so much on whatnot now, between mm -hmm. four and 700 items a week is what we're currently hitting. Um, and we're trying to get that to a thousand, that's my personal goal. Uh, we'll be there in the next few weeks. Anyways, uh, you have to download WhatNot app. You have to go to the app store on your phone and download the WhatNot app. And then after you get it downloaded on your phone, um, follow Burner Brother Antiques. That is our, our user channel name. Uh, it's right. just like our YouTube channel name, Burner Brother Antiques. And then you can bid on those items that we're offering on whatnot. And that's that's a live feed. It's just like we are talking right now, but it would be a live feed. And you can comment, you can say, hey, yeah. how you guys doing today? Or, uh, hey, I like that ring in the back, or what is the whatever yeah, on an item. Show me that. Uh, and we can we can talk through stuff. And uh, it's actually, it's very interesting. And it's, and it's uh, it, it, I think the the auction business is evolving right now. It'll be different in a couple more years. It's gonna get uh, way better for you as a buyer. No, so okay, one, getting back one to- One more thing I was gonna say, when it comes to registering on those platforms, a lot of times new buyers um, go into a pending um, stage. And if you are pending, send us an email or give us a call so we can approve you. Um, we have we get thousands of pending um, buyers and unfortunately they do not automatically approve. So sometimes um, we, we never approve all of them because a lot of them just get automatically um, registered to our auction on Invaluable and we have like thousands of pending bidders. Okay, so now, you now you gotta to explain bid, that. Why would you not approve somebody? I mean, that's, why would I not Because you just said you wouldn't somebody? approve thousands it's, of people. It's because, Oh, I don't know. They 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 register automatically. They're not actually actively trying to even bid with us. They just as soon as our auction goes online, they they get a notification that the, and they've bid with us in the past. So they. But, get well, but what are some of the registered. reasons though? Because you turned out like sometimes I sit here and watch and you're like we're not approving that person. Why why would you times, not approve somebody? Okay, when you bid on Invaluable or high bid is similar, um, there's a bid history that the auction houses can see. I don't think the customers can see that. And it tells us how many times you've bid on items that you didn't pay for, or there can, there can even be feedback where the other auction houses say this person is really rude, or this person is really difficult, or they have done chargebacks. Slow paid so chargebacks, so uh, so possibly yeah, fees. So, I mean, the, watch it in that camera the there. red flag for me is <laughs> chargebacks. It's like anytime if if somebody does chargebacks, that is something that I really don't. So so uh, like. I wanted her to explain that a little bit because we don't approve everybody uh, for the burners.com sale, um, but we we try and approve anyone that is a legit person that is just mm -hmm. a good buyer seller. Uh, but there's a lot of thieves out there. We've had stuff stolen. We've had. Uh, chargebacks happen. It's like a, uh, and that's why we don't approve everybody by any means. Is there's a lot of people that that don't want to do the right thing, um, and the system through Invaluable and through Hybrid both is are both getting better at better at weeding all of those filtering kinds of people out, out, filtering yeah. them out. And on whatnot, it's really easy because yeah. whatnot does that for us. We don't have to worry yeah, about that. So nice. um, we don't yeah, approve or not approve anyone. Whatnot app a does lot that. Of stress it, off yeah, of you it, do not have to worry whatnot. about if somebody's a legitimate buyer or right. if they're just trying to be out there and 
I mean, believe it or not, but we have people that just get on there and register and bid, and then we never hear from them. It's like, what was the point? Yeah, of why all did you that? do that? Why would you like, do that? Yeah. But yeah, what not? Heck, when you bid on that and you and you win, you it actually takes it right. It lets you know right away. Right? Your charges, your card, charges instantly. your card instantly. And if it doesn't go through, you can't bid anymore. Right, and then it like, but it also lets the buyer know too yeah. that hey, I got that item. It's paid for, and I'm, yep. it's, it's on the way. Now, so could, one question that I would have if I was watching, I'd be, um, now I bid, say I wanted to leave a bid of $100 on an item. Mm -hmm. My bid automatically doesn't start at $100. No, no, it mm -hmm. does not. So um, on auction flex, or both of them, it's kind of the same. It's like an eBay type thing where if you bid $100 and then somebody else leaves, a, we start at a dollar for everything right. on our burners auction too. So if you put in $100 and you're the first bidder, then somebody else says, oh, this is cool. I'll leave. It'll show them that there's $1 bid on it. But then they're like, I might leave $10 on it. So then it jumps up to 10 and the next available bid would be 11 until somebody bids all the way up to you. And then once somebody bids more than you, you're outbid. And that and that you happens every single so day. Like, um, right. That's all through the yeah. invaluable that happens every day. But we also have multiple platforms. Uh, and I always like to explain this because right. we may have $100 or $5, whatever the amount, presented by six or eight or ten different people. Mm -hmm. um, and not everybody wins, even people though that I, every week, like we get and I brought what I left like, on it. And I'm like, yeah, but you were third or fourth person that left that. Uh, so, you didn't okay. leave more than that. that doesn't happen as much on the higher dollar items. But when we sell a thousand items and they all start at a dollar and a lot of them sell between one to five dollars. And there's a lot of times multiple, multiple bids on that one dollar. Right range or two dollars yeah like, and then the people will, some the first people one is will be it. like well i bid uh fifty dollars on that and it brought what 51 or 55 55, 55 mm -hmm. the next bid. then they were like what i would have paid 55 well yeah. it, we only it, go it, with it even, goes with it's even more difficult than that because we do have the two platforms so sometimes it happens that somebody will leave fifty dollars on invaluable and invaluable does not tell us that that's a fifty dollar bid we are we don't know how much you get and that's the other thing you and don't invaluable know just says bid and it'll say at 45 dollars it'll flash red for jacob and it'll say bid and then at 50 it's set it, yeah so i i I, buyer. I personally set and run the auction or lucas one of us do we're both licensed auctioneers so we actually run our burners.com computers um and i have three computers I look at for bids. So we have our invaluable bidding, our high bid bidding, and then our uh, our absentee bidding that is that is like in-house type stuff. Um, and so we're putting all that together on the fly because it's not mer a mergeable system. So I have to like make personal judgments uh, a lot of times on who gets that item. Mm -hmm. And I give preference to our in-house absentee bids first, and then the high bid computer, and then the invaluable bid computer. And I do that because the invaluable computer is live. Um, so you can still be so sitting there watching and you have a chance to continue to bid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I handle That's that cool. part during the auction. Let's go on. Um, another but question here. Lots of times people are confused and I'll get emails that'll say, I left $50 a week ago. Why <laughs> did I not get it when it sold for $50? And it's like, we didn't know that your max bid was $50. So... So uh, someone asked if high bid changed this policy and that they're starting to charge 5% additional. I think that's just for the live bidding, and right? They're not doing that on any bids. I don't know if that's accurate or not. If that's new, that would be new to us. What, what, what? I'm confused about that. They're, they're saying that high bid is charging 5% additional now. Not for us. No, no. We're not doing that. I'm, I just said that. We don't yeah. do that. <laughs> no. It's a no. <laughs> it's a no. She didn't no. understand the question. We got it. Okay. I was still thinking of the last thing. All right. <laughs> you all right? Move on. Yep. Move on? Okay. See, when you're really smart, you got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, we're, we're, we're too simple. We're, good. <laughs> we're on the next one. <laughs> will you be posting any more bulk jewelry sales on YouTube? Will you be showing us any more house calls? Uh, that's an interesting question because uh, we just video what we do every day. Um, YouTube bulk jewelry sales, uh, the last couple of weeks I have not done that for a couple of different reasons. One of them is um, if Lucas isn't there to turn the comments off, then then I just skip it. Um, because I don't, the comments on YouTube when we do lives are outrageous. Uh, so many people that just make crazy comments, it, it gets bad quickly. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to do live on YouTube where people can comment, where we're not moderating it uh, and can block people and stuff. Uh, so that's one of the reasons. So if that happens, uh, we did do a live sale last night on YouTube. Um, until and, the power went out. Until the power went out. <laughs> uh, and house calls, uh, we take you when we can. Uh, a lot of times if I go to a house call and they're like, hey, I, I don't want a camera here, then you know we're not going to show you guys that. Um, but the way we do our videos every day is 
It's what we do every day. I um, mean, we never know what we're really going to do throughout the day yet. Like no. today, I don't yeah. know where I'm going to end up. I got a message already that I got text. Somebody's wanting to sell me some stuff while <laughs> yeah. we're doing this call. Um, that's like I said, we've said it before. Though, but that's the worst the... question that I ask him in the morning is, "What are you doing today?" Yeah. <laughs> what do I answer? Like, <laughs> what, yeah, like, what's the I answer? I can't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. I don't know you. <laughs> I'm going to buy and sell antiques today. <laughs> but that's also the what makes every day I mean, exciting and, and you know anxious and th you know it's a, the thrill. Well, we the... didn't know we didn't know that we were going to get invited to go to Hersler House in George yeah. Rogers Clark Park, um, right? And that we were in next week, next Saturday. Then, we know we're no. going to shoot a cannon now, like that. We're taking you guys with us. We don't. We really don't know. Uh, so when we film, it's just. I mean, this isn't a production. Like we, I literally take the camera with me, and uh, yeah. we don't have a team editing our stuff. I do it. Uh, you know, after this yeah, video is over, I'm gonna sit not editing, editing crew, the film crew, the light crew, the sight crew. It's all, it's it's all right here. It's all right here. <laughs> so uh, I do that uh, just as I'm as I'm going through the day, and then there's sometimes we get so busy, I can't I can't film. It's like I'm just too busy working. Um, getting stuff done. And that's when Josh and I get the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally they'll grab the camera. Um, so yeah, and not, like I said, not everybody wants to be filmed, um, right. uh, you know, by any means. And when I go into a call, I always, I always ask, Hey, is it okay if I film for our YouTube channel? And, if, and they're like, no, I don't want to want you to film here. We don't, we don't. So well, even people that come see us sometimes they don't, they don't want to be on yeah. film and stuff and that's fine. And that's, we always respect that. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're putting ourselves out there. It's <laughs> been, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, the, a lot of people in the world well, it's, don't, uh, aren't afraid to tell you their opinions about how bad of a job you do or right. what you do wrong or right. <laughs> and and uh, you got to have some thick skin in order to do, do this kind of thing. Do. Because, and there's, don't get me wrong, it's there's way more good. Than yeah, there's 100%. <laughs> but you'll have people that'll... That'll make comments, and that's why I said you got to turn the comments off there because it'll get crazy. I mean, it'll, it'll start commenting about political and overseas. Oh, and making fun of what you're doing and how yeah. you're doing it. I can't you know, even our customers making fun of our customers. Who would pay those crazy prices? Like you're commenting about something you really know nothing, know nothing about. about. Yeah, um, it'd be like me trying to comment on a, on a rocket. I don't know anything about rockets. I can't tell uh, if that's a good one or a bad one. Yep, I could go to the car lot, Jacob, and I'd not a used car salesman. Ex exactly. I don't know nothing about cars. <laughs> but in our market, we we try and do the best we can with integrity and uh, have a lot of fun while we do it. Um, and again, we. Uh, the YouTube channel itself, like our, our goal, we have several several goals. It's not just one goal. It's, it's, it's multifaceted. One of them is sharing knowledge and insight of America's largest antique center. So the Heart of Ohio yeah. uh, Antique Center is like the, the mega uh, antique center in the country. People from all over the world fly in to come to it's our mean, antique it's, center. It's becoming really, honestly, it's it's a destination. It is a destination. It's not just a, a, a building or a place, an antique center anymore. It's, it's, be, it's a destination. You come there and you... It's, I'm not going to compare it to Disney World, but, no, but you spend, you can't come there and see it all in a day. Not if you're really paying not attention. Not if you're paying attention. And looking. And looking. So here's an example, like <laughs> so something that just, uh, we, we just got a new vendor in and really, high, we oh. work really hard to bring great stuff. We actually have sitting on our floor right now an item I haven't showed you guys yet. I'm going to tell you about it That's now. Nice. I'm going to try and film it tomorrow. We actually have an item on our floor that has a, uh, an original signature from every single person that signed the U.S. Constitution. We have the individual signatures clipped and framed. Uh, it came out of a museum in Pennsylvania, and it's for sale at the Heart of Ohio Antique Center. Now yeah. think about what I just said. Yeah. The Constitution. The Constitution of and the United every States. every name that's on it has a sign an actual signature of and they're that all, person. They've all been uh, verified. The signatures have all been verified. We've the, got in all the, the information, uh, the forensics and, and all that are all, the reports are all there um, for all these signatures. And so where can you go anywhere in the world and buy that item? I mean, I, I don't think there is. No, I got, I mean, I've seen George Washington's name there. I mean, you're John Adams. I mean, there, there is it's John crazy. Hancock. It, it, no, John Hancock's not on there. It was a Declaration of Independence. Declaration of Independence. But, but what I'm saying is, is there's so many rare, rare signatures on there, and that's one item in the Antique Center, and you can't find that anywhere else in the, in the, in the country, maybe in the world, oh, maybe it's, anywhere. It's like it might be a one of uh, to have outside of being signed on the Declaration of Independence. I don't know if there's any other ones for sale anywhere um, that are authenticated original signatures. And, and we have that at the Heart of Ohio. So when you think about the Heart of Ohio, we have that item in there. But we also have... Uh, Miscellaneous, you know, we have yeah. whatever, like the people, mom and dad and pop, pop, mom and pop stores bringing stuff in. And even that item's owned by a, a, a small businessman. You know, uh, yeah. he's an investor, small businessman. He buys and sells antiques for a living. And 
um, you know, he, he has really rare items. So, so at the heart of Ohio Antique Center isn't just a place that you're going to go and find flea market stuff. Like you're going to yeah. come and see uh, great yeah. stuff, and you're going to have fun stuff, and you're going to have reasonably priced stuff, and you're going to have some one ofs that are going to be priced accordingly. But it's going to be a great atmosphere, and we invite you to come and experience it because it is a destination. So that's again one aspect of this channel. We want to educate people, help you guys understand what's selling and for what prices. Uh, we want to teach you how uh, how to get in the business. You know, it's just we we have shown you Lucas's progressive progression. Yeah, and he's coming up on two weeks. On he'll be two weeks. one year. Yeah, in two weeks from now he'll be. That'll be a year. good little sit down. You're gonna have. Yeah, we're gonna do a sit down and talk with him about what he's learned. And and you guys that are watching Lucas and Joe, the, they're both right at the year mark, and they're. Their minds are just like growing so fast in understanding of uh, antiques, especially yeah, talk about sponges. Yeah, oh, wow. especially glass. Yeah. Uh, man, they've really taken a liking to glass. They love glass. Everyone gets into the business and likes something different. Yeah, they do, and they their 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 forte is like, oh okay, god, I don't know about this glass. So uh, yeah, and I mean, and, and we also, uh, you know, my faith will never be outside of who I am. I am uh, a, a person that wants to be a light in a dark world, and and then that I also try to be that. So when we talk about our channel, like we're we're trying to increase our business, and at the antique center, we're trying to uh, get more people in our auctions. We're trying to be a light. We're trying to educate. Uh, and do the right thing uh, for our industry. And I think that our industry is uh, growing again rapidly. It was in such a decline for so many years. Um, and I feel like owning the largest antique center in the country, it, it also falls on us to and help responsibility. inspire people, yes. you know, inspire people to get in the business, to buy and to sell, to I mean, trade. It's like being a coach. When you when you yeah. own one of those businesses, you, you, you got to inspire people to, to want to be a part of it and to Show them how, how fun it can be. One of my favorite things is there's an eight-year-old boy in Urbana, Ohio, that uh, collects um, Vaseline glass. Not Vaseline, but anything that glows. You know, any, okay. anything that glows, anything any kind glows. of uranium glass. Uh, his grandparents were at the Antique Center again Saturday, and they showed me his collection. Uh, and that is so encouraging. Yeah. There's an eight-year-old <laughs> that sends his grandparents shopping for him, and he's got a whole showcase full of stuff with a black light on it. And the, my favorite part was he says, now remember, ma'ams and pa, I don't know what he calls them, grandma and grandpa, don't buy anything with a chip. I don't <laughs> want it if it's chip. I love that. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it's worthless with a chip, but he understands already I got to buy, uh, you know, uh, quality items. And right. if you're going to buy some of the chip, it's not as, it's not as valuable, um, you know, right. most of the time. Yeah. I mean, know, it, especially in gla the glass, the world. glass, world, the glass industry, man. And I'll tell you, that's one thing you see people, they pick it up, they evaluate, they're looking at it, they're running their fingers around the rim. And is that a neck? I, but, but I understand it because if the piece is perfect, then it, it is what it is. It's a, yeah. It's, it's a, a premium it's, price. It's a premium sure. price. Yeah. If so, it's not, then it's, you can find a bunch of glass that has chips and broken, but if, if you can find that piece that's perfect, it's, it makes it more valuable. Well, hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's coffee talk. We got Silka here. Josh is out on assignment. Uh, we'll have a report back to him tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> on assignment. So, uh, yeah, uh, today, this is Monday morning. We're filming this. This gets posted on Monday night. I thought um, it might and then we also have here he uh, oh, Josh, he's got, Josh is he's coming in late. Well, we're cutting this off before he gets here. <laughs> yep, we will. We will report back on the assignment. But he's coming up the driveway. I can see. You him. can see him right now. We're not gonna let him on. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget like, subscribe, comment, and continue to ask questions. Every Monday we try and answer all the questions that are asked on our YouTube channel, uh, and also ask personally if we have some that we can think about um, and just share, share, share what we have. So blessings out there, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of our channel, and tell your friends to uh, join us. Like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, auctions coming up. Make sure you're watching tonight on uh, our Whatnot channel. Yeah. Premium yeah, picks, premium high-end glassware with Lucas and I. Um, I've got the the Tuesday night. I think we're going to do another jewelry show since our yeah. our lights went out last night. You okay. Have to finish. Yep, Lucas we got to finish Monday our show. Nights. <laughs> hey, this oh, is Monday his. Nights, this yeah. is his night. He loves this show. He loves Monday night shows. <laughs> he does. He does. So, uh, yeah, make sure you're following us on there. Then don't forget every Thursday, 1,000 lots on burners.com. And come visit the Antique Center. It is nothing like, there's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. Uh, one of a kind, 122,000 square foot uh, facility. And he'll buy you lunch. And showcases. First time visitors, I'll buy you lunch. Just uh, come find me uh, on me. So we'll All see right. you guys, or Jimmy. We'll make Jimmy pay. <laughs>